Hello everybody, how's it going? I'm Keshav and welcome to another episode of the Sketchbook Podcast. Finally, we're back and we're going to roll the intro and we have someone special joining us today for this episode. So yeah, we're going to talk about five bad art advices. That's the topic of today's podcast. You know what the talking, let's roll the intro, shall we? And we're back. How's everybody doing? Good. It's been a while since we ever did a podcast. But this time, from now on, right, things are changing. A lot has changed since the last episode. I'm doing the podcast when I'm having some time and doing things, you know, because we're working on a lot of stuff. For example, Drawing Cam, one of the coolest drawing programs that is out there. You should probably check that out. If you want to draw like me, hey, go check out Drawing Cam. <laughs> Right. Anyways, so we have someone special with us. Who's that special? I need the voice. Can I hear that voice? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey man. Hey man. My first, my first time at a podcast. I'm hey man. Really excited. That's right. That's right. And people are wondering, <laughs> what is that? What is that voice? It sounds like a more younger voice of Keshav's, <laughs> except with more accent <laughs> and probably less manlier than me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, right. Oh, wow. wow. I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Praveen, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, guys. My name is Praveen Srinivas. And right. I'm the video editor at Cash Studios. One of the video editors. Mm -hmm. Shashi will kill me if I said I'm the video editor. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, Shashi is also a video editor at yeah. Cash Studios. So, yeah. I'm here to talk with Kesh on mm -hmm. the f uh, one of the first podcasts that I'll ever be doing in my life. So I'm pretty yep. excited. Wait, one of the first podcasts. This is your. This is not your first podcast, though. I, I did one and I deleted it because it was bad. So let's just <laughs> say this is my first one. <laughs> well, well, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Praveen, yeah, Praveen just joined here at the Kesh Studios, right? Yeah. We're 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 growing, man. Yeah. We're growing. Fast. The dream workplace. The dream workplace. Yes. Yeah. We have got everything. like five hour work days. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting there. We're not yeah. there yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Paid. Uh, I don't know. Free le free holidays. Yeah. Monthly, yeah. weekly lunches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the best part. We have a rule at the office that we have to go for lunch at least once a month. Yeah, once a month, and whenever Sashi wears a brown hoodie, yeah, we go. <laughs> we go. We go out. We don't care where we go, but we go. <laughs> yeah, man, that's right. We get into the car, go out of the lunch, grab some ice cream at the end of it. Yes. That is our and waffles. Waffles. We can't, we can't betray the waffle club. Hey, yeah, man, that's right. I had some waffles last night. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you for reminding me that. What? Well, so, so, well, yeah. Well, where, is, where is my pizza? <laughs> well, I'll mail it to you. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, you reminded me, we were talking about food and you reminded me of waffles and I was like, went home last night and just went and, oh boy, it's like, <laughs> I felt full after dinner and it's like, man, you know what, I'll just go and eat some waffles and I ordered some waffles. I was supposed to share that with my people, <laughs> with my folks, but, but yeah, I was like, hey, you know what, they're in the other room, they don't know I ordered waffles. <laughs> So I'll just eat it all by myself. So that's what I did. Oh, Waffles, pancakes, ice cream. So you have the great betrayal. The, <laughs> you're taking us out for lunch tomorrow then. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what? My, my gut needs to heal for the next couple of oh, days. <laughs> so maybe after that, we'll yeah. go for that. It's a new month. We have to. Yeah, we, yeah. we have to. It's we actually have. December. Can you believe that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 2020 is going to end. 20, yeah. Finally. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are happy about that. Yeah. Screw Corona. Yeah, but mine went good actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even for me, right? right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I had a, like a fantastic <laughs> year, and you had a good, a good I had year. A great year. I had a great year. I got a new job. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a freelancer back then. Now. Wait, that was a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> what was the second one? Freelancing. Freelancing. Uh, yeah, I, I was doing freelancing before this. Oh yeah. Before oh, yeah, right. Cash Studios. So. So so Praveen is a musician. Yeah. If if you don't believe me. You can hear a strum, a guitar strum, right now in like three seconds. Like three, two, one. See, Praveen is a musician. He's so good at it. Yeah, that's not even that's not even the guitar. It's just me singing. But you yeah, guys, just... you no. Know, when he opens his mouth, this is the sound you hear. It's like like this, like that. See. <laughs> anyway, 
so he does gigs and all that thing so i thought the podcast was getting a bit lonely with just me being here thought I needed to sort of you know yeah. instead of just talking to the wall yeah I need to talk to a human being. Yeah. So you're the replacement for the wall right now. Right. So how do you feel right now? <laughs> right? Was good in the first two sentences then later you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, got to be honest here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, to the topic of the day. Yes. Right? Five bad art advices that is being thrown around in the art industry that I absolutely hate from the bottom of my core. That is the thing. That is the thing. Great. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Oh boy, man, I've got some today. So some of the, some of the advice is right. Some of the advice is actually related to the world of visual art, but the other half is you know, is that applies to the world of art in general, yeah. right? And uh we you know we might disagree me and Praveen, we are quite the debaters, yeah. you we, know. We we fight all the time. <laughs> we fight all the time. That's right. <laughs> we are like I'm going to vote for this guy you're going to vote for that guy well you got to be fighting man you can't we you and I can't stay in the same room you can't you can't vote for a guy yeah guy. you got to vote for the guy I want. you know what you're fired <laughs> <laughs> right god i think think this will be the last day at work for me <laughs> First podcast and my last, last podcast <laughs> and last day at work that's right <laughs> well here's the point here's the first point here's my first point man what's the first advice that really I think I, gets on your nerves yeah this is this is not up on the list but this is a good starter right. you know it's on the level 2 of my nerve getting on my nerves list right i just want to see if this is something i've heard too oh yeah, yeah. so <laughs> this is similar i can actually throw some analogies and that is the bad advice that is being thrown around is Good artist never uses reference or copy from other artists. Mm. Mm. So in the world of visual art, you're often told that if you use a reference picture like me, you always see me drawing people from photos, right? right? Or things from yeah. photos and all that stuff. And uh, you know, you always see me use references for my illustration and yeah. all that. And they say or I don't know who they is, but some people say uh -huh. that it is actually bad if you do that. It's not good. Uh -huh. you have to come up with your own ideas yeah you you have to sort of sit and just think about it and you have to sort of you know get something like from here <laughs> and you just, just come in here and you're like, like that so that's that's what you probably should be doing and that is the uh, the ant uh, the argument i guess right. i mean for this uh, yeah. advice it's like, like that. so <laughs> that's the advice you got to yeah <laughs> So they're, they're suggesting people, uh, you know, do that and or copy other artists. I mean, uh, I, I kind of get where they're coming yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But 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 in the matter of learning right. comes a question. So let me present my argument here. Yeah. Right. So I think this is a bad advice to say that good artists never use reference or copy. Mm -hmm. So one to say that good artists never use reference is to think that inspiration is something that's so innate uh -huh. in you. Uh -huh that everything that you produce should be extremely so original that it is never the humanity has never seen anything like that before yeah. i think there's a wrong or a uneducated view of inspiration mm -hmm. right i feel inspiration is something one inspiration or maybe uh, the reason mm -hmm. right the reason or the motive mm -hmm. i'm not going to call it motivation but rather that that is different right motive is different right <laughs> Are, uh, uh, the things all these ideas for your music mm -hmm. for example yeah. all these ideas for my drawings yeah. everything comes from a combination of different things that we are inspired by right, right? Yeah. Uh, to give you an example if you're a baby mm -hmm. right and in your learning class, I'm not calling you a baby yeah. don't worry. <laughs> well sometimes I am so <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that <laughs> right so the thing is I mean if you if you're a baby right mm -hmm. again you're learning to talk you're learning to speak right and you usually actually learn to speak by listening to your parents first or people who are actually growing you or what is that the word yeah. parenting you yeah. right so the, the baby listens to what their parents are saying and they start forming words by mimicking them mm. right they mimic yeah. them then they start forming words and all of a sudden over time they find the meaning for those for those words mm -hmm. they don't know language they don't know grammar they don't know alphabets right. yet they can speak the language 
right yeah. before they go to school yet they can speak yeah. the language and they're able to do that because they are actually able to sort of look at the uh, their people who have came before them right and they're able to take things from them and they're able to form things out of their own yeah. and even though they take things from the outer world mm-hmm. at the end of the day the baby is going to only speak in their voice yeah. right they cannot speak in their parents voice right right yeah. even though it may be the words yeah. that is from them but the voice is theirs yeah. right so like that artists often bring inspirations from different kinds of sources from life mm-hmm. from experiences mm-hmm. from uh, you know things that they have seen things that they've heard mm-hmm. stories that they are sort of going through or have listened to before mm-hmm. you know and uh, you know it's, it's, a, it's all a combination of these things and uh, and and that's how art works and also something in general to the uh, art or uh, people visual art people right you, you how do we how do i put this you you cannot know everything right you want to be able to draw the human body you want to be able to draw the human hands the heads and all that thing you cannot have everything in your thing you know how to draw like you know how to play the guitar right you can probably listen to a song mm-hmm. look at the sheets yeah. and play probably you know play some guitar can you do that i i think i can <laughs> <laughs> well that's a bad example right? Wow. <laughs> right i mean some people can but i get it yeah, yeah a lot you, of people can, can. it's just yeah. me <laughs> the problem <laughs> no but i yeah. actually you know what I, i actually want to tell you something the first time mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure you know this book mm-hmm. there's this book called steal like an artist oh i love that book yeah yeah i saw it, I I saw it the first time uh huh And then I'm like that's such a dumb book. Oh, What yeah. the hell is that? Yeah, I mean I know I I don't read books. Oh, I just saw it at a I saw it at a bookstore and I was like what is that? Why would they ask you to do that? <laughs> like, uh, right? Yeah. But then later uh, one of our friends like couple he he explained it to me saying like this is what they mean and it actually makes sense. Mm. Nothing that we do just comes f- no from more. within. Yeah. Like it's all about every like bits and pieces you see in your daily life, right? Exactly. like like you said the voice is ours but then from the body language to the words to the slang to the accent everything is from different things that you see mm. so yeah i don't i don't think uh i like coming from music too you you can play at least a hundred or thousands of songs with just four chords oh yeah right and i'm going to be learning those four chords yeah i'm going to be teaching you that, that. <laughs> yeah but that doesn't mean like those are all from the same uh you know they're not they're all not the same songs Mm. but you can see that the chords are the same yeah that right. that 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 bass is needed in everything that 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 is one thing yeah. and 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 also people okay from in the in the world of visual arts right mm-hmm. in, in the world of drawing people for some reason mm-hmm. they think that uh you need to be you need to have a library of things inside your head mm-hmm. you know if you have to draw hands right now you should be able to sort of just draw hands without use of any reference of course a person who has drawn 10000 hands right. would probably be able to do that right. but what if that person is not that interested in drawing that many hands but right. want to be able to draw hands so in that case they will be using some sort of a reference yeah. to actually modify things and to actually do things i mean leonardo da vinci used a reference when he painted yeah. the mona lisa <laughs> well <laughs> Do you think like we can ever create something that never existed? Like let's say you're drawing a girl, like a face. Mm. Do you think that face is something that you have never saw? Yeah. I mean, people can do you, that. Can you, can can I yeah, I, mean, I do that. Yeah. Or maybe it would be a mixture of like all the things different from, things that yeah. you saw. Yeah. I think I think that's how things work. I mean, there's going to be always that one piece of art that is so that appears to be so original, right? Maybe it cannot be so original. It appears to be so original. that that you think it's 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 a pivotal it is it, it needs to be a combination of different things like skill yeah. craft inspiration uh-huh. the unknown and the intangibles and yeah. all that to come together for the great piece of art to exist it is possible and it is doable and every single time you draw something you paint something or you sing something i i say it's it is original right, right? it is original oh, it is or oh, i just hit my mic it is original <laughs> that that thing hasn't existed before right it yeah. may be slightly different mm-hmm. i mean it has some good grounding or foundation to something else yeah. is it completely so original i mean uh, uh, yeah i think it it matters on what they mean by like what uh, what is like original make, yeah right? yeah that is the question that yeah. should be the definition of what is original then that's a big sub there's a big that's subject that's yeah. yeah anyways yeah. so so good artists 
good artists actually use a lot of reference mm -hmm. right and they do copy others but not to plagiarize and steal their stuff right. and yeah. throw it around uh, but rather to actually copy to learn yeah. right copy i learned a lot by copying from other artists i just like copied all the cartoonists that i really yeah. liked yeah. and like copied them. i was able to pick something from them right. i just took the religion of it the philosophy of it rather than their tactics and right. techniques yeah. and all that thing i did take some techniques here and there yeah. but when you do it with so many other people you just form something that is of your own mm -hmm. and you put it through the pressure cooker cooker of your own yeah. brains it, it it turns into something that's so new that you know doesn't that combination doesn't exist before yeah. so sort of talked about this before so good artists do use reference a lot of reference in fact you know and good artists do copy mm -hmm. but yeah. they don't steal <laughs> great artists steal <laughs> <laughs> is that from the book <laughs> yeah oh, it is? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, 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 the great art of steel is the line, uh -huh. not from the book from Picasso or whoever said oh, right. it. <laughs> I stole it. <laughs> Disclaimer, don't steal stuff, one stuff, yeah. without any form of remix, uh, without anything, uh, right, any changes being made to it, anything that's being drastic from the different. Don't steal stuff like that, right? Yeah. Steal the uh, philosophy and the religion rather than the tactic mm. so that's yeah. a good one <laughs> that's that's a good one we're on we're, we're on to the second one which is something that gets on my own nerves uh -huh. and your nerves probably which you just spoke about that yeah right yeah. if you're good at something never do it for oh free <laughs> <laughs> all right you know what before i i speak right i tell my point like why, why do you think that's a bad idea well to be honest, when I first heard that, mm. I was like, damn, that makes so much sense. Mm. Like, I've been doing things for just free. What am I doing? Like, damn, you know? Uh, yeah. But then later, as I keep going. So this is when you were stuff, starting out when I was as starting a... Out. Yeah, when I was starting out. And a I'm beginning like, musician. Yeah, a beginning right. musician. And I, where, you know, where this kind of made, st started making sense to me, I, lear I learned this line mm -hmm. when people started saying, I'm really good at it. Oh. So I think that can really get into your head. Mm. Oh, I'm good at it. Why am I not being paid? And uh -huh. and you see people who are, who might not be as good as you right. at that point, but then they're getting paid, and then uh -huh. you're like, oh, like then I should start getting paid. But that's not how it works because mm -hmm. most of the time I don't think money works with like how good you are. Of course it does, mm -hmm. but when you're starting out, if it would be a really dumb move if you stop performing until you start getting credits for that mm. financially. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Stop performing. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. that. You, of course, you should try. Of course, you shouldn't be like, I'm just going to start performing for free. That's definitely going to put you down. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you shouldn't take it to a point where you're not going to perform at all mm -hmm. unless you start getting the checks. That, right. would, that, that would definitely stop you from like getting chances, meeting people, learning a lot. Like, because I don't know, like you, once you start getting paid, I'm well, what made you what made you think that it is it's starting to affect me? Well, um, what made you stop listening to that advice? Because you started honest, out and you listened to it, yeah. then you stopped at one point and you're now you're saying it's so bad. Yeah, to be honest, I never really stopped performing because of that. Of course, I was so dis but the reason I know that how it would have affected is because on my on my path to uh, getting paid, I, I was like super depressed because I'm not getting paid for like hundreds of shows that I'm doing. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I'm just like, I need to pay. In fact, the worst part is I was doing charity shows. <laughs> Okay, and I'm All like, right. and I'm raising like 25,000 rupees and stuff <laughs> and, and I'm, <laughs> and I don't have cash to go back home and I, I'm asking dad like, hey, like I need to go back home. So right. it was, it was bad. But now later when I started getting paid, I, I realized like if I stopped doing all that, I wouldn't have started getting paid at all. It would have took me much more uh, longer. longer time to like start getting paid because that I had it on my resume and I had the experience. It's not just like saying I did a hundred shows. Uh -huh. the, the next show that I do, I have the experience to actually control the crowd right. and it's a much bigger thing. Uh, exactly. Because, right? Exactly. I mean, I mean, that's, that's a part where, where most people miss. Right. Yeah. So, so the thing is, <clears throat> it's a very good, it's a very bad piece of advice for starting artists yeah. who are starting out, yeah. like such as yeah. Yeah, when you were starting out in the, uh, in the world of, so you're not a musician, you're a singer actually. I'm a singer. Yeah. You're not a musician. So I'm, I got that wrong. Yeah. So, uh, 
for people who are starting out, it's really, really bad because one, it often puts them in a place where they will miss opportunities or work uh, or gigs or anything that would actually gain them the experience that will allow them to be able to be paid either getting started getting paid or being paid more because they're actually good at it right. instead of sort of mediocre good at it yeah. even good has like different levels right yeah. there's like one level you know what you're not you don't suck anymore right, <laughs> right? you're not an amateur yeah. right you, you seem to sound good or you seem to draw well then after that you're like oh oh you know what <clears throat> you're good yeah. like that then I was like, you're good, yeah. like that. You're like, holy crap, you're good, man. Like that, right? So there's so many levels of good, you know? So, so Heath Ledger didn't actually make that point clear. Yeah. <laughs> the Batman movie. So <laughs> it's, a, it's about a guy yeah. with a cape on him. <laughs> yeah. And, and why are you taking advice from a psychopath who kills people with a pencil? Why would you do that? <laughs> wait, we're talking about John Wick? Oh, wait. No, Joker. Joker. <laughs> Right. So the bigger thing is, right. So let me give you some, my, my points and my uh, context. So I started out working for free, right? Left and right. I just go around asking people, Hey, you know what? Want to get that thing done? You know what? I'll help you. I'll do that. And I'll help you do that. Right. You don't have to pay me. Yeah. And uh, I actually got to, I, I keep mentioning this thing. So Jake Parker is one of my uh, inspirations, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So he's a, he's a fantastic artist illustrator good businessman he knows what he's doing uh, you know and a bunch of people hate him for a controversy which was completely stupid i don't know what happened to that uh, anyways yeah <laughs> let's let's not get into that so let's just stick with the art side of things right so i i just reached out to him one day and i was like man i'll, I'll work for you for free right i'll make videos for you so listen like this was a point in my life where i was completely broke i just got out of a job right uh, meaning i just got into a job right after my college final exams i didn't even graduate okay. right i i just wrote my final exams i got a job then i got out of the job because i realized you know what instead of doing it for other people i'll do it for myself right, right. so then the work stopped coming because i was charging stuff right right, right. i thought i was good i was good i was like yeah good yeah. i wasn't like oh good like yeah. that right <laughs> so then then the job, the, the gigs weren't coming in and, uh, you know, I was broke. My mom was the only working person mm -hmm. in the, uh, the house uh, and uh, the mom and dad, they're, they're, they're uh, separated. So right. that, that gives you a context. So my dad is a good businessman. So he lives in another place. So, yeah. Right. So financially to support the house, nobody was there. Okay. And I was like, the job wasn't coming in. Okay. So I, I thought, you know what, Kesha, my philosophy has always been keep moving. Right, keep moving, keep doing stuff. Something, some, some, sometimes some things might work out. Right, just yeah. hang on and keep moving. Yeah. So I just messaged him on the uh, Jake Parker. Right, uh -huh. you know what? Hey Jake, you know what? I'd like to edit some of your videos and make it into turn into like mini films, like this guy, this this entrepreneur guy is doing. I'll make it for you. You have some fantastic pieces of advice that could actually, uh, you know, be very. Uh, very helpful for many people mm -hmm. and uh, I said I, you don't need to pay me mm -hmm. and I'll just do it for free so that's what I did I edited a video and I sent it to him and uh, fun fact I've, I've never edited a video that was so good for myself before mm -hmm. right so that actually opened up a piece of my craft right. which I've never seen because actually I was doing it for someone else right. if I had actually waited and uh, you know I'll get to that anyways yeah. That opened things up for me. And I sent him that video and the video got like post posted on Facebook and it got like 9 million views. Yeah. It's like, holy crap, wait, something that I edited? Yeah, I know. Got 9 million views? Are you kidding me? So like, did you like hit him up randomly or were you guys in touch? I wasn't in touch. So He's, so he was very video. hard to reach. He was yeah. a creator of Inktober. He's a big shot uh, Marvel's guy. Marvel guy is done for Marvel, Marvel comics. You know, he's he's big on Instagram. You can't get him, uh, you know, uh, reach him on Instagram. And I happened to see that he was posting on Facebook. And on Facebook, it says he typically replies within an hour. Oh, really? <laughs> so I heard, 
well that's a space he was, nobody was paying attention to so i was like just like slid into his dms right like the, what the kids say these days <laughs> and just slip into the dms yeah that's and what the simp say about yeah. <laughs> the kids oh, all right <laughs> well <laughs> and i edited more videos for him i did like a bunch of vlogs and after i was done with that you know after like you know each and every single video was getting like 25k views 30k views and yeah. which i've never gotten before right like yeah. mind you i had 4000 subscribers at that point and <laughs> to want to have a video that i edited to take like 9 million it's like what what oh and uh, i was i was i was i was literally speaking to him uh-huh uh after this the finish not perfect video and an- another video then i was actually speaking to him mm-hmm. from the hospital after my mom's surgery okay and my mom just got surgery and i was standing there you know oh. when the doctor told her she needs to get surgery he's like man you're you're uh you need to pay for surgery and i was like wait we are broke though we don't have any savings we don't have insurance we don't have anything we couldn't pay for a surgery that just costed 40000 rupees so that would that is less than 6 or 700 dollars mind you folks for the us folks that are out there right <sighs> so i was like screw if you don't <laughs> screw this advice screw joker that bloody son of a gun <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm going to go work not for free if they if i, if I get paid fine mm-hmm. if i do it for free fine i'm going to work Yeah. I'm going to do 100 gigs. I'm going to do 1000 gigs. I'm going to do 1000 projects. If I get yeah. paid for 5, well, that makes it yeah. for me, right? Yeah. You just need a, but 1000 makes me good at my craft. Yeah. And if I do 1000, on the 1001, they're going to see my work and say, "Man, I can't just employ you for free because you're mm-hmm. so bloody good at it." Yeah. We go to the point of, "Oh, you're so good." Like yeah. that, right? <laughs> right? So I worked my way from that. I just did a lot of free gigs and I always constantly not just free gigs, I constantly over deliver. I do it till this day. Like right. I'm going to be doing a children's book in like right. in February. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, the thing, talking, right? Yeah. I'm actually excited about that. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do a video on that. So, the thing is, the pay for that children's book is small, very small. Okay. Right? I'm not going to uh, disclose, it disclose the thing, but it's very very small. Yeah. And 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 that book is going to cost me like a month full of mm. work like right. right? long hours of work yeah. and the pay is so small and uh, and 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 I could actually earn that same amount of money in like 7 mm. or 8 days if I just sit here right. through my digital products and courses that yeah. are being sold right right so but I'm still doing that children's book but why i think it's important yeah i'll i'll get to that and not only am i going to be doing that children's book yeah. i'm going to actually over deliver on that mm-hmm. i'm going to give the person the publisher who's hiring me mm-hmm. for like i'm going to give them more than what they've ever paid mm-hmm. for and i'm going to i'm going to satisfy them so right. that is one over delivering is my it's is right. a habit that i try to follow and not always works sometimes it puts right. puts yeah. too much pressure on you yeah right no, no no but why you uh why do you think like i want to know because it's important mm-hmm. i think this would kind of like explain the point on like why like you have to kind of work for free for something uh-huh. or like not to a point where you have a rate in your head yeah why are you selling the book for such a uh, for much lower cost than what uh, you know the effort you put into it I want to get a children's book done. Right. It's as simple as that, right? It's like I, I, I want to have a children's book. I want to finish a children's book. I know I can do a good children's book. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like I don't have the time to do it on my own because there's so much pressure in the marketing aspects of it. Uh, I don't want to bear all the responsibilities right now because we already have drawing camp, which people go should go check out, right? <laughs> drawing camp. What if people? Are, what is drawing camp? Well, drawing camp. Check the links down below in the description. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So that is that uh, that is the reason as it's as simple as that does that answer your question it does yeah to be honest like i mean i'm interpreting it in a very different way because mm-hmm. i don't know if you realize like what you're saying is is the point like you so if you want to do a children's book think about it you i don't think you can do it right now with drawing camp and like you do a bunch of other like you have things, a bunch yeah. of other things but you have a publisher mm-hmm. and now you're tying up with them and you you have a much smaller budget but if you do it by yourself you know you can earn more exactly but you're not because that's something people need to notice you can't just be like i'm good mm. pay me you're also getting a bunch of other things that is the thing right? that is the thing people mistake pay with money 
right right you get the space you get yes. the exposure there's so much yes there's so so there's so much value and you at the end of the day you never get working for free you get your workout you get paid you get paid an exposure your skill be- becomes better you yeah. do 10 projects like that you're yeah. better off than the person who's sitting there in their house saying you know what right. i'm going to go do my next gig yeah. only when i'm getting paid while you are here Trust at so it hustling so right yeah. getting better at your craft and on your 11th gig you're better than this guy and going to get paid more yeah right true multitask but that's like that's this. that's such a perfect line right you're never working for free Mm. I would yeah if you're if you're ever working for free that's called practice that's right right that's never <laughs> going for a waste that's a good that's a good way to put at it <laughs> and and the popular counter argument to this right is always but but artists are getting spoiled what exploited here and there right and and they're being uh, they're being underpaid they're being uh, what is it uh, they're being uh, uh, oh my god right I, i don't know how to put it yeah. right It's like it's always from a, f- a place which is so timid, and they're they're saying it in such a way that it's like we shouldn't be exploited. People should know our rights. Yeah. They should they should they should be able to uh, acknowledge me for who I am and how valuable I am because I'm a princess or a prince born in a bloody caravan or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Why would a prince be born in a caravan? <laughs> I just the idea is right. People are afraid of exploitation. Mm. And before we got on this podcast, what did I say? Get over it, right? No, oh, uh, <laughs> we said a lot <laughs> of things. You're filtering it out. <laughs> I was, I said get the bloody hell over it. No, yeah. I said get the beep over it. <laughs> right? It's like well, if you're getting exploited, it's not their fault. It's you being exploited. If yeah. someone exploits you, Praveen, I'd say Praveen. Yeah. Yes, they are an there you know what yeah but at the end of the day full on you or what do they say some on you it's on me yeah it's on you at the end yeah. of the day for you you allowed it you allowed to be exploited yeah. yourself yeah. why would you do that yeah. get out of your house it's, it's like a bad relationship <laughs> yeah stop being naive yeah. right get stronger yeah. go lift weights stop being skinny fat all right hey now now you now you this is coming directly <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the one who complained. We're Kendall. both doing 10 push-ups every day. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, right? So we'll stop smacking Praveen right now. The idea is get over it. Really, I mean like if someone's exploiting you, it's because probably 99% of the time it's because of your naivete which comes from your lack of experience of having not done so many jobs or so many gigs. you don't know the terms you don't know how to negotiate or to speak to people because you think networking is bad being an introvert is so cool i'm going to sit inside my house and just be an artist right you, you don't spend the time to go out and actually speak to your friends and develop some social skills which actually helps you yeah. negotiate most art artists don't ask man they don't like even ask you know like they don't they don't say hey you know what can i get more on this they're so afraid of being uh, failing me too Yeah. Like I mean I, me. me too. At the that. end of the day me too, right? Yeah. I mean I f- for for me this this from me I'm I'm not like coming from a place where I'm like oh I'm above all of it but rather I can see it in myself and I've gotten very better at it. I haven't I haven't been perfect but I always ask. I ask for more. Hey, you know what? If if you're quoting one for me Can I quote two? It's like two. That is double of what we quoted. Well, if we cannot do two, can we do one point five? Well, maybe. It's like okay. How about you? We both meet in the middle and say one point three. All right, we'll do one point three. That was more than which you ever. Yeah, right. Like negotiating, negotiating with people. Like go higher and beyond. They'll say, you know what? That is not our budget. Uh, that is not our thing. We can't pay that high. It's like. uh fine you just either reject them or you you glue them in and saying you know what we'll meet in the mid- middle ground and at the end of the day they're not giving but you're still want the jo- uh, job yeah. do it for the initial amount that they yeah. ask for yeah. what's the point all of that conversation yeah. there's yeah. there's nothing no loss in that yeah. right the only upside to that is you might have gotten it right can't right. complain yeah. about it i, I was i think i think it's like when you like learn what you really get out of it Mm. and not just it's not a factor of money or exposure when you see the bright side and you kind of see the entire 
mm. like the entire picture, picture. you kind of you can you can kind of say like okay you know what at this time maybe i don't want money i'm getting this or that or maybe this is something i'm doing for them and this makes me feel good oh yeah there's so much i think oh, it yeah. kind of takes time to like get there <laughs> at the end of the day folks there is always going to be people who are ready to hustle you aka me right <laughs> right if you if you're like say if you're on your high castle saying i can only do this job if they pay me or beware there is a kesha or a praveen coming in <laughs> saying we could actually do it for lower get the experience get better than you are and actually you know do more gigs because of that and get paid on the fifth or the sixth gig more than you will ever imagine yeah. that is being very that, definitely happen. Happen. that is the hard truth truth <laughs> is bitter one of my mentors used uh, my mentor used to always say un mai sudum abhi truth truth burns actually truth is not only bitter truth burns right it bloody burns i'm telling you <laughs>
I mean, yeah, that point does make sense. I mean, whatever you said is completely mm. true, right? But uh, I think mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. I would I would definitely not see it that way. I think it's just mm. on what we need. Exactly. I mean, if you want to be right, right. really good at it, yeah. if you want people to actually know you, right. you got to work your freaking yeah. bottoms off, yeah. right? <laughs> it's also about like something, this is something I've been struggling with actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is something I've been thinking like, is this right? Because... I think we all know that chasing after fame is something wrong. Like that's all at least it's pictured. But mm. I see myself chasing that. Mm. Like, I mean, I am happy when I just sing, mm. but I don't, I feel like the validation is what I need though. I think everybody needs that. Right? To an extent, I yeah. think you just make peace with when it. When people say like, just be good at, just be good at it. Just like, just uh, work, work a part-time job, make money out of that. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, do music for yourself. I'm not, I'm not really happy with that. Into that. I, I kind of want that to be a part of music as well. Maybe once you get it, you'll probably be bored of it. Sure. That is, that is true, right? When people yeah. say, hey, what you think, the luxury is not good. It feels like I, I'm, I'm a loser to cop out of it before even getting it. Maybe experiencing that and then saying, you know what? Now, now I kind of want this. I think that makes more sense. Uh-huh. Rather than being like, oh, this made sense to him. So I'm just going to be happy this way. I feel like I would have a regret saying, but I don't know how that feels. Ah, yeah, right, no, right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, you, you got, you, ha- you, you might have experienced both. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you need to and go through choose. it. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. I mean, I went through, I went through that phase, yeah. and uh, to this day, <clears throat> right now, these days, it's not about fame, rather than how can, how can, how, how much of a positive difference that I can make for myself in my life mm-hmm. and for the people around me in my immediate circle. Right. I actually care for my family. Can I actually bring some positive enforcements right. in their life and the people in my immediate circle, right. such as yourself, you know, people who are working here, yeah. right? I want to be able to do stuff for you guys right. first. And I think that is what <laughs> I used to be big on this changing the world thing. I want to change the world, right? I want to change everybody's life. It is so awesome. It's like, man, really, some people don't want to change. And why would you want to force that, mm-hmm. right? If they're doing something that doesn't yeah. affect you, why would you want to yeah. go and yes. yeah, do that, right? So I thought, you know what? If I can make something better, mm-hmm. if, if I make my community around me better, right. right? And you make the community around you better and everyone does that, the world will automatically be a better place, yeah. right? Sure. So that is, that is, that is my point. Well, wait, what were we discussing? <laughs> what was the point? What was the bad advice we got? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> you got to learn, you got to draw hours and hours to get good at art. So here's what you need. To, yeah. Hard work. Yes. Look guys, it's in, it's very, it's, it's very important that you need to, you need to work hard. Yeah. You can learn drawing like the one that I'm doing with just a couple of hours of practice every week. You don't have to be drawing for hours and hours in him. You got to practice a lot. It's going to take more time, right? There is a difference between optimal and doable and sustainable, right? What may be optimal may not be actually good for you, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's optimal for me to work out in my gym six days a week, right? Eat protein all day and skip the carbs and the waffles. Well, (laughs) you can't skip the waffles, waffles, right? It's not sustainable for me. So I'd rather do something that's doable and sustainable, which is work out just three times a week, right? Right. And have a waffle here and there, which is turning to be a lot, (laughs) right? And and just do my thing. I might get the results, but I'm just going to get it a lot slower. And I might not go all the way to the very top. But the thing is, I don't want to. I have other things I want to be really good at. I want to be good at actually being myself. I want to be actually, you know, to be the greatest ever. But I want to be the greatest ever at myself rather than be the greatest artist ever, right? right? Yeah. So that has been my goal. I want to be I want to be really good at art. I want to be able to do a bunch of things, but the things that I want to do. So that is the thing. That is the thing. Even with the guitar, four chords, you can do 100 songs, right? That is like 80% of the way. Right, the twenty percent is what makes the greatest Jimi Hendrix, and the other you don't you don't know Jimi Hendrix. I do. Oh, thank goodness. I, oh come on, <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't know I Billy know Eilish. So <laughs> hey man, I don't need to know <laughs> colored hair girls, right? <laughs> I just offended half our audience. 
Well, Billy Eilish doesn't need to know a pencil holder and podcaster, <laughs> such as myself, right? So it goes both ways. <laughs> All right, let's go to the fourth one. What's 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 the what's the? Man, we gotta keep one? these I things really through. quick. Yeah, we gotta go through these things fast. Yeah, sure. Because we 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 have a sixth one. Which you said, which you bought up, uh-huh. which we want to have a rip at, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's I have some bunch of things on that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fourth one is this. They say digital art isn't real art. Go do some real art, maybe you know. Just go do some pencil paper thingy, you know. Don't don't do digital art. Don't have to do that. Man, that was a pretty good voice. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is. Folks say digital art isn't real art. This is not a bad advice, but rather it's a bad statement. Which I thought, you know what? Hey, once we're at it, the bad stuff anyway. <laughs> we'll just include that in right here, <laughs> right? What is my first question? What? <laughs> what? It's like saying digital music isn't real music. Well, I can still hear it, and it still makes me go <laughs> like right. <laughs> <laughs> right the thing is i i don't have much to say uh i get where the statement is coming from this is very strictly in the, in the world of art which mm-hmm. i think I, you can always sense it in every other field in the film right industry. no to be honest i have i have a lot to say about this but yeah go ahead yeah, all right all right all right that's good then uh i mean it comes from people who think that digital art is something where you just press a button press this button and that button all of a sudden the mona lisa appears like hello dear how's it going <laughs> right so that that isn't how digital art works uh it is exactly like drawing on paper except you have all the tools inside one button you can pick and choose from and you have more tool options rather than uh, you know having all the tools on your table and you picking it up and it's easier to carry right and it's easier to share because it's digital right so that is the thing to say digital art is in real art is ignorant in my opinion if you consider that i'd say it's wrong but you don't have to change your opinion because of what i said if you hold that opinion go ahead but it's just a bad opinion <laughs> so just yeah. keep it to yourself <laughs> just keep it to yourself just kidding you know you don't want to say it i don't care i'll just say it say the opposite <laughs> when it comes to this point mm-hmm. i think you need to hear this from me because like mm-hmm. when it comes to art or anything right mm-hmm. if you're not if you're not a person who's living under a rock which is something i see a lot of people going towards <laughs> <laughs> they are <laughs> right i'm sorry i take that back you'll come after me <laughs> no all right when you're anything that matters right you are selling yourself like you you like when it, especially when it comes to art you're selling you're selling your you're, you're selling your art or your music or anything mm-hmm. when when it comes to that all that matters is about what the person looking at feels mm-hmm. right i could have made this guitar out of anything if right. it sounds good to you you're not going to be like but this is not a good guitar so i don't like it if you like the music you're just going to listen to it right if, when i see digital art that's what i feel i generally like digital art rather than traditional art as of me because i'm not an artist mm. or anything when i look at it i i like that but if yeah. i want a poster for my for my place i would rather go for a digital art or something right yeah that's right it's so, more vibrant when you yeah. print it out yeah so it doesn't matter if it's like you know real enough mm. it's more about what it gives out Mm-hmm. So that's what I feel, at least when I when I that, uh, think about that. And, and you can see the sentiment actually in every world. When people some some people hate hate electronic music because they feel it's more synthesized. Right, does, yeah. It doesn't have the human imperfections. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah. And and uh, and also in the world of film, there's a group of directors who actually love shooting on film, mm-hmm. like literal film, mm-hmm. right? Rather than digital cameras. because everything that is these days yeah, yeah, is being yeah, shot by course. digital cameras yeah. but certain directors feel that you know what digital camera doesn't feel right yeah. rather film shooting literally on a negative film yeah. is a way to go yeah. so i get i kind of get the sentiment right yeah. and i empathize with you on that i i see a bunch of things that's going in a way that i don't consider mm-hmm. real but that is for me unfortunately yeah. <laughs> even though no matter how much i say it people are not going to listen oh my god what am i going to do <laughs> so 
Yeah, <laughs> that that is a thing. Yeah, that that's a good thing. example. I I've heard that a lot. A lot of people choose film over digital. digital yeah. Yeah. We're both media students. Yeah, I, I mean, man, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's something we have in common at least. <laughs> Except you came in the first day not knowing how to handle a camera. Yeah. I was like, where, how do I how do I press how do I start recording? <laughs> where is the record button? No problem. That is the bathroom switch. <laughs> The button supposed to be in the camera. Why are you checking the walls? <laughs> All right. <laughs> here's the here's the fifth one, and we got uh, you know we got one more which is your which was yours. Oh, okay. I I just came up with five, and he was like, yeah, you know what? I have a good one. It's like, up, yep, that is a good one. All right. Fifth one is this. You don't need good art supplies to get started. Or no, 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 what? No, no, no. I, I, I think completely <laughs> it screwed it up. It was, it was the opposite. People say this, which is a bad advice, which is you need good art supplies to get started or right. to get good. You could, you need really good art supplies. You need everything under the sun that is out there in the art world to be the next Da Vinci, or else you shall never be Da Vinci, and you're just gonna be a broke YouTuber. <laughs> All right, so what he's trying to say is <laughs> for the people who didn't understand. Yeah, you, you. So the advice, the bad advice is, you need really good art supplies to like, yeah, to be good at it. Exactly. Hey, hey, hey Amen. And here's the answer. No, you don't. That's now to the, the sixth point. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> you don't. You don't need good art supplies. Here's the deal, right? I'll keep it quick, right? I started off with copy papers and ballpoint pen because I literally couldn't afford supplies when I was a kid. And uh, and uh, my father used to get me the best supply which I got was this set of pencils which costed 800 rupees. It's a Stedler pencil. That was my first ever proper piece of art supply. But I started out with Nataraj pencils. You know that? Yeah. Nataraj <laughs> pencils. Every, every Indian kid knows that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Nataraj. <laughs> I think that was a biscuit company DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I mean, you don't need good art supplies to get started. You don't even need good art supplies to get good. I've seen people who are so bloody good at what they do. They're like, you know what? I don't want to try new things. I'm just going to stick to the old stuff and get actually good at that old stuff. Right. And they've gotten so good at the old stuff. It's right. crazy what they're doing, right. right? It's like, you know, Ed Sheeran with the ukulele. Yeah. I, I'm not saying ukulele is a bad supply. <laughs> it's like bad art tool. It's a good tool. Yeah. But, you know, people thought you couldn't do a Billboard 100 song with a ukulele. But he did. Well, yeah, he did that. Yeah. Screw Billboard. <laughs> but did he do it with you? I don't know. He he does a combination of. Things. I think so. Yeah, but well, no, I know a lot of people who play the ukulele and like they're like so good at they're it. They're very good at it, right? I mean, J J Jamie Fox. He had a story where he introduced Ed Sheeran in this right. in this yeah, yeah. club, right? Yeah. It's full of black folks, yeah. and, uh, and nobody was into the music Ed Sheeran does. Yeah, and the, that he was this white guy with the orange hair, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. just came in. He just pulled out a ukulele, and people started laughing. Yeah. But in 30 minutes later, he got a standing ovation. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's like this, right? So I mean, it depends. It depends on a bunch of things. I'm not saying you should never get good supplies, right? I get. A, I I have a bunch of good supplies around me. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the hypocrite and say, "Hey, you know what? Just stick with that bloody ballpoint when you but start out." I think that yeah, when, when we start out, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. When you were starting out, yeah, definitely not. And to even get good at art, you don't have to have. You yeah. don't have to have good at supplies. Yeah. It helps to have good supplies, yeah. but you don't have to. That is the difference. Right. So that is the sixth one, right? right. Sixth one. You want to. You want to do this? Yup. Well, why, why are you pushing this to me? <laughs> Do you think do you think this is this is the most controversial one? This is a controversial one. It's like people saying, hey, cancel these folks. I'm like, you know what? Don't worry, guys. I apologize. I've posted my apology on Twitter and Praveen, this unnameable employee has been fired from our company and he doesn't stand for our ideals that we stand for. We bow to the mob. All hail the Twitter mob. <laughs> I hate Twitter too. All right. The last know. point. Yeah. To end this podcast. Uh -huh. To end our lives. <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest piece of art of... No, no, I, <laughs> I didn't say that. 
the no. worst piece of art sir <laughs> yes it is it is actually the worst mm-hmm. advice to give i have some counter arguments to yours i do agree with you but i do have some counter arguments so go all on. right sure <laughs> Like I mean, I didn't even make my point. I didn't even make my point. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> yeah. no, All right. So one thing that I really think leaves a very like a huge negative impact that kind of stays with them for for a very long time. Mm-hmm. It's better. All right. So the the point is the bad advice is saying be yourself. Mm. I generally think that is not. Um, yeah, I, people are just going off their hot seats and saying, "How dare he say that." Well, he's just a twin. You know what? Uh, there's a better way to put it. Be the best versions of yourself. Yeah. I think, All right? right? You need you need to like work your way to it. Be yourself sounds like you're just copping out and then you're just like, you know what? All right, cool. <laughs> I'm settled. <laughs> Brother, you just summarized the modern generation in like two words. <laughs> just copping out. <laughs> I'm, I'm being, I mean, you know, like where's the motivation? Where you don't have to do anything if you're just going to be yourself. Mm. I mean are you how, you need to start like exploring yourself and then of course I'm not saying you should hate yourself. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying don't just like agree to what what it is and just sit down. Yes, I mean agree right. to what you just are, right? Yeah. Right? It's, I mean I think insecurity is the problem, right? People are so insecure about a lot of things. That's a good point. Why why do you think so? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to explain that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So when people say don't like either say like oh be yourself is not a good thing the reason they get offended or like even feel like that's a bad point is because you know they that 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 means they start being insecure again but mm-hmm. not being yourself doesn't mean you have to start having these doubts on yourself or anything it's just that you you need to learn to be comfortable within your own skin and also try to be better at what you want i mean you you will have a dream mm-hmm. i mean i want to be a huge i want to be huge in music mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and i do like the way i sing now mm. but i find my i find things that the, that can be improved that wouldn't make me of course that makes me insecure when i'm hitting a note that i know that i can hit mm. i wouldn't be i wouldn't call it to be insecure mm. i just have my doubts at it so i can improve on it that gives me space to improve on it right, right. now if i say I, i should just be myself i would just sing at a much lower register uh-huh. that that i'm comfortable with Mm-hmm. so when do i excite people when do i actually do it i mean this is for my field mm. but this when you when you start putting this into different terms when do you start growing like when you start actually exploring yourself when you start actually being the best version of yourself you're never going to know right. right that's that's what i feel so and it's not just being like hey start start hating yourself just don't go around saying oh this is this is me this is who i am <laughs> it's, it's a it's a nuanced thing that needs to be said in 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 context to see actually i wanted to start off this podcast with this disclaimer saying that advice is just that advice right it is contextual advice needs to be contextual meaning you, 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 everything that was shared here cannot be applied to everywhere and every person at every time mm-hmm. right it it needs to be contextual to that person in that moment to their particular situation or context in their time right in that particular time so that is what i wanted to say and 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 same goes with this advice of be yourself it started out in a in a time where i think it might have started out in a time i'm assuming everything in a time where people were afraid to be something other than the stereotypical version that was being presented in the society and they were afraid of that and people started saying you know what hey be yourself mm-hmm. be yourself then it just went from that to the biggest shit storm that's just right now <laughs> it's like i'm going to be be a crap i'm a i'm, I'm a crappy person yeah. therefore i'm going to be myself <laughs> like that is one bad i can't tell my 6 s- uh, year old brother be yourself for the rest of his life right, right? if he be himself like this he is right now at that that's moment right. for the rest of his life he would still want chocolates right. <laughs> 37 and would want me to take him for a um, i don't know a merry go round <laughs> the shopping mall <laughs> which is a bad place to go in merry go round <laughs> it's just like i feel like people have a knack of like oh you accept everything that's a good trait you know what i mean i see that right now accept everything just accept everything oh you accept it the people okay this is one thing i've learned these days right 
accepting uh, so you, you, you the people are confusing accept everything with agreeing with everything right mm-hmm. you can accept yourself and disagree with yourself yeah. i can accept that i have this body right yeah. now and disagree that it needs to be better or I disagree with the fact that it, it has to stay the same right, right. right? it actually needs to be better right, right? i can now want to be able to run i need the bloody knee pain in my <laughs> thing to go away it's bothering me for so long i've accepted the plane but bloody son of a gun go away stop you want yeah right so i can move on <laughs> that's right i've accepted myself but i'm not also agreeing with myself right yeah i've accepted the negative thought which i just had but that doesn't mean that i'm agreeing with my negative thought mm-hmm. it's just a thought I'm just going to go ahead and just do my bunch of other things that I want to do anyway, right? So, be yourself it needs to be contextual and be yourself is that itself needs to be explained. Yourself needs to be better in order to be yourself. If you're a crappy person who enjoys uh, I don't know, poking people in their noses <laughs> and is irritating other people, well stop doing that be a better version of yourself right yourself right now could be better i don't think myself right now is going to be what i am i mean if i had told my 5 year younger self my my previous thing just be like this for the rest of your life be yourself yeah. right uh, i would have been one idiotic person right <laughs> and if i'm who i am right now 5 years later I I'm I would have been one idiotic person it needs to be contextual that the, like you said the be- better way to put it is be your better self yeah. be your best version of yourself and it's okay to like take time to do that you don't you yes. right i think yeah. that's something you they feel like you don't have to be like the be the best version of yourself when you're 29 and you know where's the catch every version of yourself feels like the best version of yourself right now you might think like you might be the best version of yourself oh yeah i think i think i'm really pretty cool but you know what? the more the more you learn i i feel like right now i think i'm at the worst place <laughs> right now when it comes to like health i don't work out mm. i mean i work here and then i just go home i play the guitar but i don't really practice a lot because i don't have anywhere to perform mm. because it's due to the whole covid thing you know what you need to do yeah. you need to stop being yourself and you need to start humble yourself <laughs> humble yourself in the sense instead of trying to establish a workout routine mm-hmm. where you do it for 45 minutes to an hour every day mm-hmm. why don't you humble yourself and do a push up every day yeah. why can't you do that yeah. i'm telling you that's the thing i'm not blaming yeah, it on please. reasons like because i'm here or i'm doing that's this right. i, I just don't do it i get it and i completely get it yeah. human beings are tricky beings yeah. right so you need to sort of trick yourself right instead of being yourself that's that's all yourself right now <laughs> the seventh one <laughs> don't trick yourselves <laughs> no, no, literally trick yourself in the sense talk to yourself right right yeah. you know what i can't work out for an hour every day this is too boring or it's too hard yeah. right my seventh grade pt teacher has instilled some ptsd in me <laughs> with with in regards to working out yeah. you know what i can do i can actually do one push up right start with the 10 minute workout every day or something yeah 10 minute workout right yeah. you know you might say one push up is probably too little that probably might not me motivate me 5 minutes yeah stick with 5 minutes 5 minutes of just push ups <laughs> or i'll i'll push-ups. i'll send you like a video uh-huh. sure. like a mobility video which oh, i yeah, did right minute. mobility thing right? yeah. yeah at yeah. least that'll that'll get you at least more mobile yeah. it's it won't get you strong it'll get you mobile yeah. then after that you add a 5 minute strength workout right right build like 5 5 5 5 minute habits yeah. this is what i'm doing these days man i have an elastic habit called draw every day and it has three levels of variation level 1 is just draw a line mm-hmm. level 2 is draw for 15 minutes level 3 is draw for 30 minutes i call is the mini the plus and the elite it's okay. from a book called the elastic habits right i'm hitting it every single day right yeah. and 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 20 30% of the days i'm on the elite level i'm doing 30 minutes or 2 hours 3 hours of drawing mm-hmm. mini is just me line right? right so that is an option for you to scale things up i'll just do one push up 
that is a mini it will take you 30 seconds that's what the mini level needs to be it needs to be like to a point where you are you're going to bed and you forgot to do your thing you should be like hey you know what boom boom done right like that it should be like that your plus level should be something that slightly takes time 15 20 30 minutes yeah. your elite level should be 30 40 50 1 hour or something like that you might not be elite every day but you show up every day but you'll be an elite person on some days and over the years you'll be an elite person like overall that is the, i have three elastic habits i'm following for the rest of 2019 so it's been fantastic. I mean, 20, 20, no, 21, 21. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Corona? Who's Corona? <laughs> Is she a girl? To be honest, like from my side, uh, uh, I just generally feel like because it's from uh, like this is something I get from my friends and everyone to be honest like when you when you hear like hey like this is something that you don't agree with when you say when I say like be the best version of yourself maybe yourself right now sucks mm -hmm. to accept it you should start being you should start feeling comfortable within yourself because not not, yeah. not you know f finding flaws in you should not make you uncomfortable with yourself that is a fantastic point which you right. just said because you know people confuse this which is saying be a better version of yourself that with then well you're a crappy person right now that's not, it, no. that's not what exactly we're saying accept who you are right now for who you are that right. doesn't mean you're to be honest i think that's what be yourself actually means yeah. accept yourself for who you are mm. and start working on your way so you don't feel uncomfortable with all the things you have with all the flaws exactly. you have not that be yourself doesn't mean you don't have flaws at all and the flaws you have, you just put a blanket on and you just accept it. No. You know, you know, you know, you know what? Actually, every single time I've started out a workout regime with a personal coach or something, yeah. I've always went from a point that I don't like the way I, how I perform or look. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm going to do this. Right. Yeah. That is true. But I'm, these days, what I'm doing is that is true. But I'm going to be grateful for actually being where I am. I just have a knee pain, yeah. right? Yeah. Instead of not having two legs, yeah. there are folks who don't have two legs, yeah. right? I'm not putting them down, right. but I'm just grateful to be in a position where I do have actually two legs yeah. and I'm able to walk, yeah. right? And I, I do, I'm not 135 kilos. <laughs> I'm just 84, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? I'm just happy. I'm just happy. That doesn't mean that I can't be better. I am going to be better. I am going to do better. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm actually at a good weight though. Uh, I'm not talking about the weight. In terms of strength levels, right? Yeah. Yeah. Being able to do things despite working out for this long. I've been screwing around, uh, screwing around a lot. So anyways, let's not get into that. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that is the thing. Just, just Don't be yourself. That is... <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I think it's better to say when you accept yourself, accept your flaws as well. Accept your flaws. You don't have to agree with your flaws. That is the difference. Accept your flaws. Move on and work on your flaws. And, and floss your teeth. Yeah, there's nothing wrong about it. <laughs> Just, exactly. Not, there's nothing wrong with having flaws, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean. You don't have to cover it up. Yeah. We're all working on it. I mean, yeah, everybody has flaws. I don't floss my teeth, but I do have flaws. <laughs> no, <laughs> the floss floss. <laughs> right. So there you have it, folks. Cease. Folks cease. That's, that's the name I've given for the yeah. community. The folks I hate the community, though. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? I don't hate the com our community. Uh, <laughs> I don't hate... I hate the idea of community. Mm. Oh, right. It kind of makes you feel like you separate yourself from the group. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> it makes... It, may, it, try, it sort of puts everyone into the sheepish... Mm. sheep like right. thing it's like yeah. saying everyone thinks the same right. everyone are the same not everyone's the same i mean everyone's had their own thoughts opinions yeah. they vote for different people <laughs> <laughs> and that is it for the end of this podcast <laughs> this is great <laughs> this was great this was a good podcast man and you didn't strum at all you want to do a little strumming strummy to strum and that is it for this podcast where me and Praveen We're talking about politics Just kidding <laughs> We're not gonna do that <laughs> Alright Alright folks Thank you so much For listening to this Bye bye And we'll see you in the next one Cheerios <laughs>